Good morning. We're dry in here. Hallelujah. A lot of people, they're getting wet somewhere. You could just as well be in church and stay dry. Or get soaked in the spiritual realm with the Holy Spirit. Amen. I really love you guys and I just want to thank you for coming this morning. I believe God it really has a good word for us in this time of season in which we live. This is a, this is a powerful time of humanity that we live in. And God is really raising up a remnant of people in these last days and just do powerful things in and through Him. He had a display of it, you know, in Acts. Acts comes along and the Spirit of God comes to the people and they went out, signs, wonders, miracles, salvation. You know, right through the get out, souls were being saved, people were being saved, cities were being saved, whole entire regions were being saved. It was a powerful move of God. Signs, wonders, and miracles are being in display. display. And I really believe in these last days, you're going to see that. You're going to be part of that. You're going to be living that, in that. And uh, but this message I have really kind of prepares us for that also. And so, the ushers, you want to hand that out, go ahead. But in Jude, Jude 1.24, Jude 1.24, it says on the screen too, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. We've been on this series for a little bit of time. But now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Hallelujah. God Almighty is able to keep you and me from falling. Isn't that great that he can keep us from falling? And to present us, present you faultless before the presence of his glory? Hallelujah. That is exciting news. Present you faultless before the presence of his glory. Keep you from falling. When 2 Peter, that's our text that we went on, 2 Peter in verse 1. And it says in uh, chapter 1 verse 5. But also for this reason, this very reason, I should say, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue and virtue knowledge. So it says, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, self-control, perseverance, perseverance, godliness, godliness, brotherly kindness, brotherly kindness, love. So he's given you seven areas here. It says, for this very reason, give all diligence unto these things. Everything you got. It says, add to your faith these seven things. And in verse 8 it says, for if these things, these seven things are yours, and we know they're, they're ours. And it says, and if you abound in these seven things, you will be neither barren, or, or, uh, which is fertile, You'll be neither or unfruitful. You'll actually be fertile, saints. You'll be fruitful in what? In the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I want to be fruitful. I want to be fruitful in the knowledge of Jesus. Hallelujah. And he who lacks these things, he who lacks these seven things that we're talking about, is really short-sighted. In other words, you're, you can only see this far. God is showing us things that will expand this way beyond what we can see short-sightedness. There is, there is an expansion that can take place in our spirit man that is well beyond what we even think we're capable of doing because God is in us and God can stretch us and get us to, to see beyond the short-sightedness in which we're living. Hallelujah. And it says... For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten. Forgotten what? We're blind to things. Forgot that we were cleansed from these old sins. If we don't live these seven things out, 
We can be blindless and short-sighted that we, we have been forgiven from these old sins. In other words, don't live in your old sins, first of all. And if you don't, you know, don't live in these old pasts. Don't live in the past, but live in the future. Live in the seven things that God has given us. And if you live in the seven things that God has given us, you won't have any reason to go back to the past because there will be so much in the future that He has for Him. As He expands us, we can see beyond our short-sightedness. We're not blinded to the truth, and we can be expanded to what He has called for you in this day and hour. Hallelujah. In verse 10, Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent. Be more diligent to make your call and election sure. Be more diligent, for if you do what these things, you will never fall. Do these things, you will never fall. You will never stumble. Hallelujah. So that's what our series is about. Keep God will keep you from falling. God gave us a list of these seven things. And I don't know if they're still in your notes, but they should be in your notes. He told us that in verse 5 that diligent, diligence in these areas will keep us from falling. Diligence really means attention. Attention, concentration, perseverance. So we need to give attention or we need to concentrate or we need to persevere in adding to what? In adding to our faith. For this very reason, given diligence, add to your faith. We need to give attention or concentration or perseverance in adding to our faith. Hallelujah. There are attacks that are going to come our way. There's attacks that will come your way in life. And they are meant to knock you down. They're meant to keep you down. But God, who is rich in His mercy, hallelujah, who has redeemed us from the curse of the law, He will keep us from being knocked down. Yes, I said He will keep us from being knocked down. He will keep us from what? From falling. Hallelujah. When we are diligent in adding these seven things to our faith, well, the Greek means supply or to be assisted about these adding. When you add, he says add. It means, it, means, it means to supply or to be assisted. To be assisted. And so, so when God says to add these things to our faith, he is indicating that we are there to be assistance to our faith. He is indicating that they are assistance to our faith saints. And they are supplements or supplements to our faith that we need to be diligent about within. Hallelujah. To apply these to our lives. Last week we learned that the first assistant he instructed us to add to our faith was what? Was virtue. And as a, remember, as a reminder, I want to tell, let you know that virtue in the Greek really meant really meant uh, moral goodness. Virtue means moral excellence, moral goodness, modesty, purity. Hallelujah. We have to turn ourselves, um, train ourselves to think, to feel, to act. With what? With excellence, with modesty, with purity in the things of God. We need to be not only towards others, which, not only towards other saints, but to ourselves also. We need to think of ourselves about modesty and excellence and purity and everything else because that's the way God sees us through Jesus Christ. We need to think good things about ourselves because God thinks those things about ourselves through Jesus Christ. Our, remember, our thoughts control our feelings. I think they're in your notes. And our feelings control our actions. Our thoughts control our feelings, and our feelings control our actions. Therefore, to build this foundation of virtue in our lives, we must fill our minds with God's Word so God's thoughts are in our mind. Hallelujah. What is God's thoughts towards you? God's thoughts towards you in 2 second, second, uh, Corinthians would be that you're righteous. 
You're righteous, right standing with Him. If you want to go over to Colossians, we're not going to go there. You're above reproach in His sight through Jesus' blood. Hallelujah. Above reproach. You're righteous. You're, uh, what was those things? I got to go there now because I don't know why. I just got to go there. Colossians, let's go there first. We're just changing gears on you. Come here, Colossians. We're, we're reconciled in Christ, for it pleased the Father that in Him all the fullness should dwell. And by Him, I'm in verse 20. Uh, chapter 1, verse 20. And by Him to reconcile all things to Himself, by Him whether things on earth or things in heaven have been made peace through the blood of the cross. So these things have been made peace through the blood of the cross. You were once alienated and enemies of your mind by wicked works, yet now He has reconciled. So we've been reconciled unto God Almighty through the, the work of Jesus Christ and His blood of Jesus Christ at the cross in the body of His flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in His sight. Hallelujah! You're not only righteous in God's sight, you're holy in His sight. You're blameless in His sight. You're, you're uh, uh, above reproach in His sight because of what Jesus Christ accomplished. So we need to start looking at ourselves how God looks at us and don't look at us through our own eyes, but look at us through our God's eyes and start get, getting into these seven things and walking out these seven things, walking out your righteousness in Christ, walking out your holiness in Christ, walking out your blamelessness and your above reproach in Christ Almighty. Hallelujah. If indeed you continue in the faith Faith grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached in every creature under heaven, of which Paul I became a master, minister, I mean. Hallelujah. So we need to start thinking about ourselves as God thinks about ourselves. There should be no condemnation through Christ Jesus. And God's trying to build us up, saints. And that we are so critical and hard on ourselves if we have some things that we need to turn from and repent from, the Holy Spirit of God will, will minister to you to do those things, but being obedient to those things that God's called you to obedient to be turned from and turn towards Him. Hallelujah. So here we go. So we got Proverbs 23. For if for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. What are you filling your mind with? The mind is the leader or forerunner of your actions. Hallelujah. When our minds are renewed to continually think the way that God thinks, then we will control our feelings or our actions. And we need to control our feelings and our actions if we continue to renew our mind in the Word of God. Those things will come out. And subsequently, our thoughts, our feelings, and our actions will be morally good, modest, and pure. Hallelujah. Now let's look at the second assistant, knowledge. God said to add the virtue of knowledge. The Greek, the Greek word for knowledge speaks of a deeper understanding of God's word. A deeper understanding of God's word. In fact, this Greek word comes from another Greek word that is used by the Jews to express the act of, really it's, it's a, a sexual intercourse between a man and a woman. That's what the word derives from. And this shows that the knowledge of God that he's speaking here, this knowledge he's speaking of, is not a casual knowledge, saints. Rather, it's a very intimate knowledge. A very intimate knowledge with God. And we, we find the same Greek word used in John 8, 32. Let's go there. John 8 and verse 32. Uh, 31, let's go. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. It's not a casual knowledge of truth that's going to bring freedom to your lives. We must have a close, personal, a thorough 
knowledge, an intimate knowledge of God's Word. Hallelujah. We must have this intimate knowledge of His Word in order to walk in the liberty that God has provided for us to walk in. An intimacy. An intimacy, not a casual thing of His Word. Not the Bible just sitting on the end table with dust collecting on it. You, you rub the dust off and you think you got into the Word. No, you got the dust off the Word. But we need to have an a intimate relationship with the Word. You know, Kim and I, we have a deep understanding of each other. Matter of fact, I know what Kim is going to say before she even says it. I know what she's thinking. I know what she could say and, and vice versa. She could tell me what I'm going to say, be, what I'm thinking. She just knows it. There's an intimacy there. There's an intimate knowledge, a deep knowledge of one another. Well, this isn't a casual relationship that Kim, ha Kim and I have. It's a real intimate relationship, a real deep relationship. And it's, let's go to verse 31 again. It says, if you continue... In my word. If you continue in my word. What's continue mean? It means stay. It means abide. It means dwell. It means remain. So the word, it says, if you stay in my word, if you abide in my word, if you dwell in my word, or if you remain in my word, if you continue, if you say, if you dwell, if you abide, you remain in me. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible's saying is continue in our word. It's like a parent tells a child, if you, if you stay right here, let's say Tyler's my little kid, at, he's three years old. If you get right on this little spot right there, and if you stay right there and don't move, don't move from that spot, I'm going to give you a gift. Oh, it's going to be a great gift. You might even show him what the gift was. I'll guarantee you, Tyler is not going to move from that spot. He, won't, he doesn't even need further explanation what that gift is. But he's not going to move from that spot. He'll do exactly what he must do to get that gift. He's, not going, to, he's going to play his part. He's not going to move from from what I asked him to do. And that's exactly the example God is telling us in these two verses. Just stay put in my word. Abide in my word. Hallelujah. Just stay put. It says, stay put, continue, remain, abide in my word. Hallelujah. Live in thy word. Remain right there. Then I'll cause your knower, knower that's enlightened you inside through the Holy Spirit, you will experience freedom. You're going to experience freedom in every area of your life if you are just know me, know my word. And that's what God's trying to get to church, the church to get to, a point in their life. In order to get this kind of knowing Working for us, we must spend time reading, meditating on His Word, speaking God's Word, speaking the truth of God's Word. Don't, you don't have to worry about the people that are around you at work or at the gas station or on the highway or at church. Speak His Word forth. It might not even come out. These people might not even realize their ignorance and might rebuke you for even saying that. But don't worry about people. Worry about what God's Word says and stay faithful and true to God's Word and speak His, His Word forth. You meditate on it. You know it. You proclaim it. You speak it forth. Hallelujah. Look what Apostle James said. We just can't have this casual relationship with His Word, saints. It's got to be a, a deep, intimate relationship. And that's what I'm encouraging. The Holy Spirit's encouraging us to get into this morning. Look what he's, Apostle James said, James 1. And I'm going to read out of the Amplified Bible, and we put it up there for your convenience. But it says, But he who looks carefully into the faultless law, the liberty of the law. So in other words, he who looks carefully into the word and is faithful to it, and perseveres in looking into it, being not a heedless listener who forgets, but an active doer who obeys. He shall be blessings in doing his life of obedience. Hallelujah. The kind of knowledge that will keep you from falling, saints, that we're talking about, must be sought after and held dear to your heart. 
It's got to be sought after and held dear to your heart. We should never have a casual relationship with the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The Word came down and dwelt amongst us. The Word became flesh. The Word was Jesus. And we should have a relationship with this Word like we have a relationship with Jesus because the Word is Jesus. The Word is God Almighty. Hallelujah. So this is serious stuff. We shouldn't have a casual relationship with, with the Word Jesus. We should have an intimate relationship with the Word Jesus. Hallelujah. And But this scripture here is, is talking about we should... Look what, it, look what we need to do when we find the truth. It says, looks carefully. We're looking carefully. And when we find what we're looking for carefully, it says, faithful to do it. That word that you're looking for carefully, you're really faithful to do it. And then all of a sudden, you're, you're also persevering in your looking. You're not only looking, but you're persevere, perseveres in looking. You're faithful with, with looking. You're persevere in looking. And it says, you're a doer of the word. You find the word and you're a doer of the word. And it says if you're faithful and persevere and do, it says what? That the blessings will follow a life of what? Obedience in these things. Praise God. That's the Word of God. I don't know about you. Are you tired of your life not having a, a, a life of blessings? Just be a, obedient to the Word of God and just watch the blessings just flow your way. Hallelujah. And the blessings are whatever God's blessing is for your life. I don't know what it is. God knows you know. A blessing that I'm looking for is completely different than a blessing that you're looking for, but God's blessings are all, all in the Bible and they're for each and every one of us. Hallelujah. But the key here is seeking out and finding the truth. Look carefully. The truth needs to be sought after, saints. Colossians 2, 3 tells us that in Christ, excuse me, that in Christ, Colossians 2, 3, in Christ, what? Are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In Christ are hid all the knowledge. Notice that the word knowledge is hid in Christ. Hallelujah. It's not hidden from us though. It's hidden for us. The things in here are hidden for us. Where is it hidden? In Christ. And if we are in Christ, then let's seek that knowledge that's hidden for us. Look at God told Joshua and us in Joshua 1.8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then, if you're meditating and observing it, for then you will make your way prosperous and then will have great success. Hallelujah. The New Living Translation says, study this book of instruction continually. Study it continually. Meditate it on day and night so that you'll be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. Do you want to keep yourself from falling? If so, then you must aggressively go after this kind of knowledge. I would encourage you and I, I'd encourage us to take time to read daily the Word of God. Make it a priority in your life. Jesus says to seek what? Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. That's Matthew 6.33. Jesus also said in Matthew 7.7, 7, Seek and you will what? Find it. Seek and you will find it. Then in Colossians 3, in which we're going to close on, we're told to seek heavenly things, not earthly things. And let's close on in Colossians 3. Praise God. Virtue and then knowledge. That's the two of the seven things. Colossians 3. Hallelujah. Colossians 3 and verse 1. If then you were raised with Christ... 
Go ahead, Scott. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. We've all been raised with Christ if we become born again believers in Christ. We've raised from our old dead ways. Seek those things which are above where Christ is, is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on this earth. That's the problem with us Christians sometimes. We get so focused on the things around us on earth, so consumed with the things around us on earth, it doesn't matter if it's your house or if it's a church, if it's a business, if it's toys, whatever it is. We can't have our eyes so consumed on things on earth, but we need to set our minds on the things above. For which, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ and God. When Christ who is our life appears... Then you will also appear with him in glory. Hallelujah. Therefore, put to death your members which are on earth. Put, put fornication and uncleanliness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is adultery. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the son of disobedience, in which you yourself once walked when you lived in them. You once did, but now in Christ, but now you yourselves are to put off all these. We got anger going, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of our mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds. Hallelujah. I'm so glad I put off the old man and his deeds because I probably was walking in over half of these things. And so we put off the, man, the old man and his deeds. And it says, and we have put on the new man who what? Is renewed in knowledge. Praise God. So the new man needs to be renewed with knowledge. So I encourage you to commit yourself faithfully to the Word of God. Hallelujah. Meditate on the Word of God. Speak out the Word of God. Remember, in Christ we are renewed with the knowledge. And now it says, remember Colossians 2, 3, in Christ are, are hidden all the treasures of knowledge. In Christ are hidden all the treasures of knowledge, and we've been renewed with knowledge. Praise God. So in closing, Hebrews eleven six 6 tells us, that, tells us that God is a rewarder of those that diligently, diligently, Seek Him. Remember our text in the series? 2 Peter 1.5 What? Given all diligence add to your faith knowledge. Seek Him. Seek God. And you'll be filled with His knowledge and well on your way to a victorious life, saints. If we seek diligently and are faithful and doer of these seven things we shall never what? Fall. Praise God. No one wants to fall. I don't want to fall. I don't want to see you fall. So we've already studied virtue last week. We've studied knowledge this week. It's a great start. Man, if you just start, start applying those to your, our lives, and you're just going to see a life of, of blessings, just be, an obedient, be obedient to God, watch the life of blessings come your way in the areas that, he wants, that you need blessings in, which is all areas. Hallelujah. Praise God. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your, for your word. Your word is powerful. Your word is awesome. Your word is personal. Because you came down in flesh and dwelt amongst us. Your word became life and dwelt amongst us. Father, this word here that we've been reading out of and studying, meditating on, through the year, throughout the years of victory. We pray that we don't have a casual relationship with Jesus or His Word, the Word, but we have an intimate relationship with Him. Father, we just pray that we can just get revelation or illumination of Your Word and start following the principles in Your Word as we start off with virtue, which is just moral excellence and now knowledge. Fill our, our minds with the knowledge of God. Father, we just pray 
that we'll apply these things to our life. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen.